Stories of Sahaba, Chapter 1, Book E, uh, I mean Part E. Abu Dhar al Ghifari embraces Islam. Abu Dhar al Ghifari, Radi Lahuanu, is, a fam is famous among the Sahaba for his piety and knowledge. Ali Radiallahu Anhu used to say, Abu Dhar is possessing such knowledge as other persons are unable to learn. Is it Dar or Dar? I think it's Dar. Uh, um, when he first got news of Rasulullah's Nabuwa, he sent his brother to go to Mecca and to find out about the person who claimed to be receiving divine revelation and news of the heavens. His brother returned after necessary inquiries and told him that he found Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a man of good habits and excellent of conduct and that his wonderful revelations were neither poetry nor the sayings of the magicians, you know, the sorcerers. This report did not satisfy him, but he decided to set out for Mecca and to find out the facts for himself. On reaching Mecca, he went straight to the Haram. He did not know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he did not consider it advisable under the circumstances prevailing at that time to inquire about him from anybody. When it became dark, Ali radiallahu anhu noticed him, and seeing a stranger could not ignore him. As hospitality and care for the travelers, the poor and the strangers were the Sahaba's second nature. He therefore took him to his place. He did not ask him about the purpose of his visit to Mecca, nor did Abu Dhar himself tell him. Next day he again went to the Haram and stayed there till nightfall, without being able to learn who Rasulullah was. In fact, everybody knew that Rasulullah and his companions were being opposed in Mecca. And Abu Dhar might have been afraid about the results of his search for the Nabi, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ali radiallahu anhu again took him home for the night, but did not have any talk with him about the purpose of his visit to the city. On the third night, however, after Ali had entertained him, as on the two previous nights, he asked him, "Brother, what brings you to this town?" Before replying, Abu Dhar took an undertaking from Ali. Radiallahu anhu, that he would speak the truth, and that he would inquire from him about Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ali radiallahu anhu replied, "He is truly the Rasul of Allah." Rasulullah, um, you accompany me tomorrow, and I shall take you to him. But you have to be very careful, lest people come to know of your association with me, and you get into trouble. When, on our way, I fear some trouble, I shall get aside, pretending some necessity, or adjusting my shoes, and you will proceed ahead without stopping, so that the people may not connect us. Next day, he followed Ali, radiallahu anhu, who took him before the Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the very first meeting, he embraced Islam. Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fearing that Quraysh might harm him, told him, not to disclose his acceptance of Islam, and told him to go back to his clan and return when the Muslimin had gained power. Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, replied, O Rasulullah, by him, who is the master of my soul, I must go and recite the Kalama. In the midst of these non-believers, true to his word, he went straight to the Haram, and right in the midst of the crowd, and at the top of his voice, he recited Shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah I bear witness that there is no god except Allah you know the singular definitive term for god in arabic and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of god people fell upon him from all sides and would have beaten him to death if Abbas, Rasulullah's uncle, who had not till then embraced Islam, had not fallen upon him to save him. Abbas said to the mob, Do you know 
who he is. He belongs to the Gefar clan. He will live on the route of our caravans to Syria. If he is killed, they will close the route to Syria, and we shall not be able to trade with that country. This appealed to their good sense, and they left him alone. The next day, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu repeated his declaration of Iman, and would have surely been beaten to death by that crowd had not Abbas intervened once again and saved him for the second time. Now, the action of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu was due to his great desire to proclaim the Kalama among the non-believers, and the prohibition by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was due to his concern for Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, so that he may not suffer hardships, well, endure hardships, which might prove too much for him. There is not the slightest disobedience in this story, since Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was undergoing all sorts of hardships in spreading the message of Islam, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu also thought it fit to follow his example, rather than to accept his permission to avoid danger. It was the spirit of Sahaba that took them to the heights of worldly and spiritual progress. When a person once recited the Kalima and entered the fold of Islam, you know, Kalima is the word, no power on earth could turn him back. No oppression or tyranny could stop him from propagation of Islam. Now, if you fully enter into Islam, you know, things are going to happen for you.